A team from Stanford believes it can help keep California climate ready by precisely tracking where our groundwater is going. And possibly reverse decades of damage that have caused parts of the state to literally sink. With stunning views stretching off to the horizon, it's hard to visualize the San Joaquin Valley sinking. Unless, of course, you have a measuring stick about the size of a telephone pole. We grabbed this one from the archives of the United States Geological Survey. It documents that parts of the valley had already sunk by nearly 30 feet between the 1920s and the 1970s. That photo is it's something that we use to talk about past events that shows how extreme subsidence can get. But now Matthew Lees and senior researcher Rosemary Knight from Stanford's Door School of Sustainability have some predictions for the future. In a newly released study, the Stanford team combined satellite data from multiple decades with readings from the ground-based GPS stations. The result is a kind of three-dimensional map pinpointing the areas most affected by the overpumping of groundwater in the Central Valley and how quickly they're still sinking. And what we've shown in this study is that, well, it's not just something from the past, it's happening now, and what's more, it's faster than it has, faster than it was before. Dropping as much as a foot in many of the years since 2006. But with those measurements comes the beginning of a possible solution. When we first met Professor Knight several years ago, her team was pinging the valley floor with electromagnetic antennas suspended from a helicopter mapping California's underground aquifers and the soils that run through them. The goal, to identify super porous basins and farmland that could be flooded or pumped with diverted water to recharge the sinking aquifers. She says adding in the new precision mapping data could help do that and more. So we are trying to integrate these two data sets, the big picture that we see with our geophysical images of the subsurface, where are the sands and gravels, where are the clays, and then the satellite-based measurement that's giving us very precise measurements of the way in which the ground elevation is changing. Based on calculations from the California Department of Water Resources, Knight's team believes there is enough surplus water in most years to reverse much of the damage if it's sent to the most critical areas. She points to collapsing aqueducts and wells too dry to supply safe drinking water. Let's be even more strategic and let's target those areas where the subsidence is causing significant economic or human damage. And perhaps begin to reverse the damage that's literally pulled California down for decades. And just to underline the scale of this, we're talking about an area roughly this half the size of the state of New Jersey. In fact, one government report calls it one of the single largest alterations of land surface attributed to humankind.